You have to be consistent in your discipline. And this is the one we probably, we struggle with. If you want, if you want peace around disciplining your children, right? You want your children to grow up in a disciplined way. You need three things. You have to be consistent. You have to count your cost. There are some fights I am not fighting with my three-year-old. There are some fights I'm not fighting with you. I just got to throw out a common sense alert here. A common sense alert, okay? 80% of the time is congruency. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it, it, it's lining up. So we just got to be congruent in our lives. If we want our kids to read the Bible, guess what? You got to read the Bible. If you want our kids to pray, guess what? You need to lead them in prayer. If you want your kids to be kind to other people, guess what? You got to be kind to other people. Man, you got to be kind to other people. What's happening, fam? Today, we're going to talk about disciplining our children. But before we do that, I want to remind you that I have a newsletter that goes out every week. You should subscribe. All the cool kids are doing it. Seriously, though, it has show notes, things that we don't talk about in the show. It has updates on upcoming episodes. You'll be in the know if you get the weekly newsletter. You can subscribe in the show notes below. Fam, welcome back to the next episode, as my man, as my man would say. I am here with my favorite guest in all the world, my beautiful, smart, faithful wife. How you doing this morning, babe? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Pretty tell good. me, tell me one good thing from your day today. Um, we've got we had conferences today with the kids, so we had good conferences with everybody's ready to go to the next school year. A little so. parent teacher conference. Parent teacher conferences. Is everybody like passing? Yeah. They going on to the next grade? Yes. We're all good. Ready okay. for next year. All right, let's let's do it. We're not gonna we're not gonna hold Malachi or anybody back. No, no one's being held back. Make him twice as strong. You know that helps on the football field. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about kids today. Yes. We have we have four kids, mm -hmm. all under the age of twelve. Yep. We love them. Um, we don't always love each of them equally. <laughs> But we at do, times, but we do, we do, we do love them. We would, um, <clears throat> we'd give our lives for them. Of course, that's real. Mm -hmm. My son, my remember when Malachi talked crazy to you not too long ago? Oh yeah. I I I, I reached over and whop, popped him in the chest, and I said, "Hey, listen to me, bro." I said, "You know, I die for you, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, Dad." I said, "You believe that? You believe I die for you, son?" He's like, yeah, Dad, I believe it. I said, well, that woman over there, your mother, I'll kill for her. You get that? Ride or die. He said, he said, I think I know what you're getting at, Dad. I said, good. I said, good. But we're going to talk about disciplining yeah. children today. And this can be like this could be a little bit controversial. No, it's very controversial, right? Is now. it? Yeah. Because there's like, there's like some people that like discipline looks different. Yeah. Some people are like hands on, like I'm gonna put hands on you, right? And some people are hands off, right? Hands off. Tell the uh, tell the audience where we're at in our home. <clears throat> where are we at our home? I think first of all, we reevaluate for every kid. Every yeah. kid is different. The right. way that you speak to them, the way that you react to them, um, you know, with our little ones, um, it's very different, right? Um, especially with their reactions, the way that they're learning right now with sure. discipline. Um, sometimes putting in a timeout isn't going to work for them at that moment. Yeah. Um, sometimes and, you got to spank that bottom. Yeah, sometimes you do. Yeah, I, um, I go hands on. And, of course, we don't do it out of anger ever. That's right. Um, We're going to talk about that. Right, but I'm just saying, like, we never do that out of anger. But 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 in our house, we're not, we're not afraid to use the rod. That's what I'm saying. From, like, right. a biblical standpoint, right. um, we're not afraid to use the rod. And I know... Maybe some people listening, like you hear that and you automatically check out. Right. We're not asking for any judgment, and we're not passing any judgment. We know families. We have friends that uh, they spare the rod. Right. Right. It's all it's all verbal, or it's all behavior modification, behavior correction. Um, but for us, we're we're like a hybrid. 
we're like a hybrid, but there's three, there's three things that, that we try to practice in our home. And listen, we're not perfect at this. Like no. Allie and I are not on this show today telling you that we have perfectly figured out how to discipline our children. Right. Uh, we probably, this is probably one of the things, wouldn't you agree? This is what we fell at the most. Yes, because we're learning as we go. 100%. I mean, we fail, and then we're like, you know, that's not working for this kid. This is mm-hmm. not working for us, yeah. and so we have to change it. Because a lot of it, a lot of what we know is what we grew up with. Who, what, what type of discipline factors were in your home as you were growing up? My parents did spank. Okay. Um, Do you ever get spanked? Did. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. Um, as we got older. Um, of course, we had more punishments as far as things being taken away, things being limited. Yeah, as I never. I was really a good child. I never got spanked. You never got spanked. I well, one time. <laughs> Are you serious right now? Well, oh yeah, I was the favorite child, hundred percent. You're you're kidding me. I you were never spanked. I couldn't do anything wrong. Wow. In the eyes of my dad and the eyes of my mom, I couldn't do anything wrong. That really surprises me. Why does that surprise you? That's a little bit hurtful. Because you're a renegade. I'm a rebel, babe. You know you that. are, and that's why it really surprised Somebody me. Somebody says go left, I go right. Like I was even spanked by my grandparents at one point. Oh, I didn't have grandparents. Right. Yeah. But I did. I like, had I've, them. Like I, I had, had them, but they weren't alive. Let me right. Clarify. No, but my thing is like by even my grandparents have had disciplined us. I mean, you know, even yeah. even in our household because we were such a multi generational family. Where yeah. we were with each other all the time. Even my grandparents helped discipline us. They loved us, yeah. and we were spoiled to no end as well. The, the the only time I remember like physically, physically being being disciplined was I cut school one day, and the truancy officer came to my house. It was really a double wide trailer, but he came to the double wide, and. My dad wasn't mad that I had cut school. He was mad because they found the marijuana plants that were growing in the back. <laughs> and I remember that day he was heated. He was livid. I think that was the day I got spanked. And how old were you? Yeah. I, so, and I don't think it was a spanking. I think it was an actual altercation. <laughs> Yeah, I probably shouldn't laugh about that. I'm not no. minimizing that. Like, like I'm probably laughing so I don't cry. Right. Let's just be honest. That really, I don't know why that surprises me about you, though. You never. Yeah. yeah. But the point in all that is how we're reared, like right. the environment, the techniques our parents use, that like influences us in some way. Well, yeah. And especially people who have suffered like abuse at the hands of their parents. Well, 100%. I mean, that definitely, that can send you in a complete, you know, a complete opposite direction. And it certainly can scar you. You know, me growing up, it was, um, I probably needed more discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my parents trusted me. I could talk my way out of anything that you believe. 100%. Yeah. You still can. Come on, girl. You know it. <laughs> um, so I think they probably should have disciplined me more. There mm-hmm. should have been more corrective measure. Um, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know in our home, it's a balance, man. We're 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 using verbal techniques, but we're also we don't spare the rod. So there are there are I call them the three C's, baby. You know how I love to alliterate everything. Yes, everything. So there are three C's that that as you move forward in discipline your children, um, we want you guys to think about, okay? And we'll we'll share some experiences in our, you know, kind of in our home. But the first C is consistency. Right. You have to be consistent in your discipline. And this is the one we probably we struggle with. Right. Right? For two reasons. One, because you and I are not always lined up. Right. Right. And then two, we don't always follow through. It's not always consistent. Right. Give an example recently of where it hasn't been consistent. Um, probably with the television right now yeah. because of the championships, you know, with March Madness and now the NBA playoffs and the Stanley Cup. Let's go stars tied it up. Two yeah, two. Exactly. Come on. Um I've really, and we've talked about this, we really are trying to set more boundaries with our screen times with our yeah, kids. That's right. Now, especially that summer's coming and we're at the end, we're trying to push to the end of the school year. Right. Um, we've had, we've been really busy. Um, and I know it's exciting, but I have told the kids like they need at eight o'clock, the screens go off. That's right. 
be it our cell phones, our laptops, our phones, everything. And our kids don't have cell phones, by the way. No, no, no. But I'm just our cell cell phones. phones, So we're putting them up at eight too, and we got the RO box. We're putting them in the box. uh, Screens, laptops. You've set that eight o'clock boundary, and then I come waltzing in, all happy go lucky, and I'm ready to watch the game. Right. And then Malachi wants to watch the game. And, and now, then Scarlett wants to watch the game. Well, and and then Calvin's Calvin crying because he doesn't want to go to sleep. He wants to stay up and watch the right. game. And then what's my response? Man, let's have a watch party. Right. Right. I'm popping popcorn. We're getting some Skittles. Like, we're doing it big. And it's completely inconsistent right. with what you're trying to lay down. Right. Yeah, it's a problem. It causes tension between us. It causes tension between the kids. Right. right. I get to be the good guy. You get to be the bad guy. We talk about that a lot. You're with kids more than me. Right. So sometimes you feel like you have to play the bad guy. Right. And I always get to play the good guy. And that makes you feel some kind of way towards me, right? Of course it does. Yeah. Right. And we've talked about that, about that many a times. And it yeah. is consistency is the only thing um, that keeps that discipline. That's right. I mean, it's the main foundation for that. And keeps the health right here. Exactly. Because it, it affects everything. Keeps that love light burning. You know well, what I'm talking I'm, about? Yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Come on. But it is. It's consistency in anything when you're when you're raising kids Yeah. is what they need. Yeah. Um, to see, you know, yeah. throughout everything. Yeah. So you gotta be consistent. If you're gonna make um a principle, a standard, a rule, man, you've got to follow through. And it's got to be consistent across the board. It's got to be consistent with the kids, which leads to the second C, right? You need to count the cost. Right. Which is this is where, and you can correct me, right? But I think I'm better at this than you are. And this is really Mm. picking and choosing your battles, right? So count the cost. If we're going to make a rule, if we're going to try to be consistent, we also have to know what we're up against and what we're going to fight. Because not every hill in the house right. is worth dying on. And sometimes it gets a little petty and you die on these small hills, right? And like I'm, what? Like, um, I don't want to get in trouble. You ain't going to be mad at me, are you? Depends on. I thought it was supposed to be a small hill. Why would I be mad if it was a small hill? Well, sometimes you take it a little more serious. Like, okay. and maybe I should be taking it more serious. Okay, so give me an example. Um, an example would be, so like during the um during the weekends bedtime. Sometimes I like to extend that because we're well, watching yeah. a movie or watching a game or something, and and maybe you feel like it should be more consistent, right? Well, on the weekends though, it's different. Also, okay. I want time with you as well, because we do have older kids. It's That's harder real. now. That's real. Because if you say we can watch a movie and you started at eight o'clock, well, I'm in bed. Okay. By ten o'clock, I'm 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 exhausted. Like yeah. I don't want to watch another movie. Yeah. At ten o'clock. Sometimes, like the clothes the kids wear, like sometimes you'll say something about what they're wearing, and I'm like, wear whatever you want, right? And 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 oh, it's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're like, well, you should probably wear this to church or you should wear this to school or you should wear this out. And Malachi comes down and he's completely mismatched and he's got one sock on, one sock off. And you know me, I mean, I'm I'm rocking the Ramones today. Right. Well that's right. So that, I'm like, let's go. Like personal individualism, right. expression, I'm all for it. And sometimes, you know, I think you pick battles that 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 are gonna be hard to win. Well, right? and yeah, mm-hmm. but I've also learned like I mean, the boy wears sweatpants to church every day, and so do you, and I don't care anymore. That's right. But, you, like, for Easter you, Sunday, when we could all take a picture, a nice picture together. You're right. I would like for them to wear something nice. Hey, I nice. wore that linen on Easter oh, Sunday. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm, what I'm saying, Come though, on. is, like, but you have to learn from your mistakes. And That's you have right. to learn about those hills. That's right. And if I didn't, if I continued to die on those ridiculous hills. That's right. Then... Then of course we're going to be inconsistent, hundred percent, and we're going to be at each other's throats. So what we're saying is count the cost. Exactly, right? but at the same time, going back to the 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 night times, that's right, where we have the TVs, you got to count the cost of, uh, do I do I stay up until ten o'clock with my kids, who then can't go to get up in the morning because they've been up since ten o'clock. That's right, tonight. and miss that time with my wife. Right, and yeah. miss the time with your wife, but also. You know, in the morning they have school, even though we do homeschool three days a week. That's right. That's still school. It is. And, and I don't still, have to worry about that. You don't have to I worry about that. I get to buy that. donuts so and get out the door. Exactly. I'm the so, hero. 
Exactly. So the well, counting the cost can, can go the, both ways. I can feel the conflict right now as All another C as another C conflict. Oh my god. But all I'm saying is count the cost, right? I'll get right. a prime example of this. We're trying to keep the littles in their own bedroom right now. Oh, yeah. But we've just stopped fighting it. We have stopped fighting because it. Because there's other things we're fighting right now. We got potty training. We're doing this. We're doing that. So you know what? If they want to sleep with us, we're just letting them sleep with us. Right. Right. But at some point, I'm going to draw a line there. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to, and it. this is a hill I'm about to die on. Oh, I hear it. Because the little elbows and the knees and my back every night. Yeah. Upside down. How do I even how do they even get in there? They're like no ninjas. Idea. I have no idea. They're like three year old ninjas. They come in at night. I don't even I don't even hear them. They could rob me. I wouldn't even know it. What are we doing? I have Setting no them idea. up for a life of crime is what we're doing. <laughs> it's terrible. Calvin did say he wanted to be a ninja the other day. I'm telling you, we got it. But 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 we've we we basically said, you know what, we're not gonna fight this battle right now. Right. And honestly, there's a little piece of me that kind of misses. I'm going to miss one day when they don't want to sleep with me. Well, of course. When they don't snuggle up next to me. Because we've got a daughter that's 5'5", and she doesn't want anything to do with it. Well, she does want something to do with us. She just has the attitude about it. Come on, ain't that the truth? So you got to be consistent. You got to count the cost, right? Right. And I'm telling you, the third C may be the most important. There's got to be congruency in your home, meaning... What you're preaching has to line up with what you're practicing. Exactly. We have to, as parents, we have to model this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We can't tell our kids to get off the screens when all we do is look at screens. And you and I, I'm going to tell you a pet peeve I have that you've been doing lately is the ear ear pod in. Right. Every time I look at you, you got that ear pod in. And it just annoys the fire out of me, right? Especially when we're trying to talk to you. Somebody's trying to get your attention. And right. I know you're listening to some murder podcast thing, which is a little creepy that you love that stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, right? But you're always listening to murder mysteries and, and you got it in. And I'm just like, we can't pay attention. You can't, right. you can't, we can't multitask like a computer. I think we use computers so much. We think we can act like computers. Multiple pages open, multiple screens open. I'm guilty of this too, right? right? Of course. How many times have I sat down to watch a movie with the kids and I flip open my laptop? Right. It's terrible. First of all, I can't do either one of those things well, right? right. I'm trying to write an email, and I'm also trying to watch Harry beat Dumbledore. Who's he fighting? Who's Potter fighting? Voldemort. Voldemort. Trying to watch him beat Voldemort, right? Right. I can't pay attention to both those things. Right. And then what type of message does that send to our kids? Well, and we've even mm. seen the repercussions of that with we have we say family movie night and the kids go and watch the movie and then I go do housework or do my little projects and you go do your emails and Malachi or Scarlett will be like, Well, we didn't have a family movie night because That's right. you guys weren't there. Yeah. Like we're starting to see the repercussions of that. Yeah, it's like we're just coexisting in these rooms. It's right. terrible. Right. right. So congruency is key. Like like these things that 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 we preach. And let me just say, I think on the whole of things, you and I do a really good job. Right. And I we're mean, learning too. And we recognize it. I mean, right. hey, first the key is recognizing it, admitting that, hey, listen, I'm not perfect at this. Right. But I'm trying, right? I'm putting these things in place for for a congruent life. You know, when I'm uh, when the kids are home, um, you know, what's important to me is that they learn scripture, they learn the Bible. So I try uh, to have a Bible lesson for them every day, and it's not some theological dissertation. It's just, no. hey, who is this, or what do you think about this, or what did God mean when He said this? And and I mean, what what percentage am I? Eighty percent of the time, do I get it done? Yeah. Ninety. How much 80. credit are we gonna give? Eighty. Well, you've been really busy lately. I know. 80% of the time I get it done. 80% of the time is so, pretty good. Hey, 80% of the time is congruency. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it, it, it's lining up. So we just got to be congruent in our lives. If we want our kids to read the Bible, guess what? You got to read the Bible. If right. you want our kids to pray, guess what? You need to lead them in prayer. If you want your kids to be kind to other people, guess what? You got to be kind. You got to be kind to other people. Man, you got to be kind to other people. If you want our kids to have have gratitude and be grateful, guess what we got to do? We got to show gratitude and we got to be grateful. There's got to be congruency. And I'm telling you, young people that that um, you know, are disenfranchised with their parents, young people that walk away from their faith, the number one reason they always stayed is what my parents preached didn't line up with how they lived. Exactly. There was no congruency in their life, man. And I tell you, more than anything else, man, I want 
I want our kids to see that, that like we really believe what we say we believe and we want to practice it. Right. Right. So at our home, we have that, we have that Harper family crest. Mm -hmm. So we asked our kids, you know, what's the, what's the four most important things to you? Right. We had the shield and we broke the shield up in four sectors, right. Just like the Knights of the round. And remember what the four things are? What's the most, the four most important things to our family? Kindness. Kindness. All right. So if that's important, we got to model it. We got to model kindness, not just to one another. The number one things our kids get in trouble for is when they're not kind to one another, when they're not kind to others. All the time. I will. If I see, I wore my son out one time because I saw him mistreating somebody. Right. And they don't know it, but we're reinforcing the Imago Day that everybody's made in the image of God. And because right. everybody's made in the image of God, they are worthy of dignity, love, honor, and respect. Mm -hmm. And I love our son. I love our son Malachi's heart. Right. He's in a dyslexic class and he's been by himself for the last two or three years. And a new boy just got to the class and Malachi, the boy walked in and Malachi said, I've been waiting forever for you. I'm so happy you're here. And the teacher said he made him feel so welcome. Like, I love that. Right. right. But that's because we discipline kindness and we're consistent with kindness. We're congruent with kindness. Second thing is courage. Mm -hmm. We got that little lion. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to be courageous. Right. Right. Trying new food. Be courageous. I'm about right. to kill some people over this food thing, babe. So this is this is an ultimate dad fail. Yesterday, I'm getting the bigs dinner. Mm -hmm. So it's Calvin, Malachi, and Scarlett. And I said, thinking I was a good dad, what do y'all want for dinner? Calvin says, I want Whataburger. Scarlett says, I want Chick-fil-A. Malachi wants Chinese food. Right. And I said, well, y'all decide. Well, that led to a 20-minute fight and me getting heated in the truck. Yeah. Right? And then it hit me like a, like a ton of bricks. Why am I letting yep. a five-year-old decide what we're having for dinner? Exactly. Why am I letting a 10-year-old decide? what? I'm a grown man. I'll decide what we have for dinner, right? Right. And then I had to yell at people, and people had to get upset, and then they had to apologize. I had to repent. I mean, it was just terrible, right? It was terrible. But from now on, I mean, you want to talk about some consistency in the house? I'm deciding what we eat. And they either eat it or they don't eat it. Right. I'm done with this. And what makes it crazy is we were on our way to serve every Monday night. Our family serves at a food bank right. where we feed hungry families. I could not wait to get on the couch, man, and tell them, do you all understand what happened today? Right. We're in the truck arguing, literally arguing with one another, being unkind to one another. Because you want to eat Whataburger and you want Chinese food. And we're literally going to serve 120 families that the only thing they're going to eat that week is the food in that box. Mm -hmm. Do y'all make the connection? And they don't, which I, is so sad. I thought they did a little bit last night. I'm going to give them a little credit. Well, they're I good. thought they did a little bit last night. Good. But, but they see it, though. They're there every Monday night. They see it. And I'm hoping they're making those connections. But the point is we got to be congruent. Right. If we want to if we want to discipline our kids in a healthy way and notice, notice what we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about spanking. No, we didn't talk about timeouts. People get so caught up. On the on the methods. Right. Right. That they forget about the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. They forget about what's really going on. And I'm telling you, if you want shalom in your house, if you want peace in your house, if you want. If you want peace around disciplining your children, right? You want your children to grow up in a disciplined way. You need three things. You have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent with your with your love, with your mercy, with your justice. You have to be consistent with all those things. You have to count your cost. There are some fights I am not fighting with my three-year-old. There are some fights I'm not fighting with you. This is a hill I'm not going to die on. I'm going to die to myself. You have right. to count your cost. Man, you have to be congruent. You have to live a congruent lifestyle if you want to be, if you want to, if you want to discipline your children well, whether you're using timeouts or fly swatters. I used to have to get a switch. I, well, you, you I remember thought you that? weren't, but I thought you weren't spanked. Yeah, but it was, uh, they never would use it. It was always a, it was always a ploy. Oh my gosh. Right? They would all, they'd always say, hey, you're going to have to go out there and grab a switch off the tree, but they never made me do that. I don't think I, they would all just say it. I don't think they ever did it. Or my mom would grab the fly swatter. What are you going to do with a fly swatter? 
a fifty cent fly swatter from you can do a from lot the of dollar store. You Man, can do that's no. Okay. That thing would break across my. It my, also has metal on it though. It hurts you. What it was the one thing you regret being whipped with? Regret? Or you hated being whipped with? Mom had a wooden spoon. Hey, you know what I just remembered? I got paddled one time in middle school. In middle school? When you could paddle people. Oh, like at school? Yeah, there was this, um, the Steiner brothers, they were wrestlers, and they used to they used to do the bulldog where they put you in and they would run and jump with you. This, they called it the bulldog. And I did that to a kid in the middle school bathroom, and I slipped on some water and ran his head directly into the stall door. Out cold. Seriously. I got paddled that day. I got whipped that day. That's real. At school. I still remember. Well, you apparently didn't. I love disciplining our children with you, babe. I'll see you next week.